This learning object is a production of Abu Dhabi Men's College, Center of Excellence for ICT and Learning Technology. Today we're going to take a closer look at blood. We all know that blood is a thick, viscous substance that is inclined to ooze out of any broken vesicles. Since prehistoric times, it was noted that blood was a giver of life. And many ancient battles showed that when blood was lost, so too was life. Today, let's have a closer look at why blood is the giver of life. In order to see the various components, we need to centrifuge a sample of blood. We place it in the centrifuge and make sure that the tubes are balanced for safety reasons. Once the centrifuge has come to a halt, the sample is removed and reveals the various components. You will notice that it has divided into three distinct layers. The first layer on top is the plasma. The middle layer is a very fine layer which is called the buffy coat. The buffy coat consists of white blood cells and platelets. The lower layer is the red blood cells. Let us now take a closer look at the three layers that were centrifuged from our blood sample. The top layer, as we saw, was the plasma, the middle layer, the buffy coat, and the bottom layer, the red blood cells. Plasma is made up of around 90% water. Suspended in the water of various components like proteins, nutrients, hormones, and electrolytes. A very important component of the plasma is the proteins. You can see that the three major groups are fibrinogen. The function of fibrinogen is in clotting. It forms the framework of the clot to take place. The second important protein is albumin. The function of albumin is to regulate blood pressure. And the third protein component is globulins. There are three classes of globulins, namely alpha, beta, and gamma. Alpha proteins transport iron and copper. Beta proteins transport bilirubin. And our gamma proteins or gamma globulins are our antibodies which are used for the body's defense. A closer inspection of the buffy coat will show you that it consists of white blood cells and platelets. Our white blood cells are known as leukocytes and they provide the body with protection. The platelets, also known as thrombocytes, help in clotting where necessary. The bottom layer, as mentioned, is our red blood cells, also known as erythrocytes. Erythrocytes carry oxygen to the various parts of the body and remove the carbon dioxide as waste products. We will take a closer look at an electron micrograph of the various cells and discuss their functions. This is an electron micrograph of the erythrocytes. As you can see, they have a biconcave disc shape. This shape is very important for the red blood cells as its function is to deliver oxygen to the tissues. The red blood cells do not have a nucleus and in this way they are able to squeeze through the tiny capillaries in the body and deliver their oxygen to all parts. The white blood cells can be seen under the microscope when one stains the blood with various dyes. The white blood cells can be divided into the granulocytes and the agranulocytes. 
As its name implies, the granular sites have granules in their cytoplasm. There are three different granular sites in the blood. The first one is the neutrophil. The neutrophil is a multi-lobed white blood cell with purple granules when stained. And the function of neutrophils is phagocytosis and removal of debris from the body. The second granular site is called the eosinophil, based on its ability to take up the eosinophilic component of the dye. They therefore stain with pink granules. The function of the eosinophil is against parasitic infections. Our third granular site is called the basophil, again so-called due to its ability to take up the basic part of the dye. The basophil's granules therefore stain a deep violet blue and can be identified as such. The basophil's function is very important in allergy. The granules that you see contain histamine and when the histamine is released from the basophils during an allergic reaction, this is what causes your anaphylaxis. In other words, your watering eyes, runny noses, itchiness, and other allergy signs and symptoms. Once again, our three granular sites are the neutrophil, the eosinophil, and the basophil. Our next group of white blood cells or leukocytes is our A granular sites. There are two main classes here, the lymphocytes and the monocytes. The lymphocytes stain without granules. One can see a nucleus in the middle and a very small rim of cytoplasm surrounding it. The cytoplasm under normal conditions does not contain any granules. The function of the lymphocytes in the body is also defense by producing various chemicals that try and rid the body of bacteria and viruses. Some lymphocytes produce antibodies and they are called B lymphocytes. Some lymphocytes try and get rid of viruses and they are called T lymphocytes. The last of our A granulocytes is the monocyte. This is a very large cell in the body and this is in fact our vacuum cleaner. The function of the monocyte is to clean the house and it scours the body for any debris and removes it. The last cell in our buffy coat is the platelet or thrombocyte. When the blood is stained one can see tiny specks of purple staining cytoplasm and these are our platelets. They may not be a true cell as they do not have a nucleus. However, their function is very important in helping the body to maintain hemostasis or clot when it is required. In our study of hematology, it is very important to know what the normal values are. When patients' blood is sent to our laboratories, we need to identify what is abnormal. Under the microscope, these various white cells are present in percentages known as normal ranges. Around 67% of the white blood cells in a blood smear are our neutrophils. Around 20% are our lymphocytes. Our eosinophils compose about 3%, the basophils less than 1%, and our monocytes around 6%. It is very important to know these normal values to identify the abnormal ones in a patient with a blood disorder. So in our next practical session, you will be staining blood yourselves and looking under the microscope, identifying the white blood cells for yourself and seeing the percentages of each.